interested in that little clip we had on the newest jobless numbers. Essie, Alicia, Naomi, thanks for all sticking around. Thank you so much. Uh, this morning, even some members are at a loss, uh, family members are at a loss as to why Virginia Thomas, Ginny, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, would rip the scab off a nearly two-decade-old wound that had the nation both riveted and divided. Anita Hill, who raised allegations of sexual harassment at Thomas's 1991 confirmation hearing, says she has no interest in talking about the matter, only putting out a statement that she won't apologize because she told the truth. I'm joined now by Sophia Nelson, Ebony Jet Magazine contributor, and by political analyst Earl Afari Hutchinson. Both are contributors to thegrio.com. Sophia, the Daily Beast says that it reached out to Ginny Thomas's brother, Russell Lamp, and he said, and I'm going to quote here, I don't believe it needs to be in the press in any shape or form, and I'm sorry that Ginny decided to talk more about it. Uh, Ginny Thomas's aunt says simply, I'm confused. If her own family's at a loss, what do you think went on here? Well, I think we all are, Chris. I mean, um, I know Ginny Thomas and I know Justice Thomas much better than I know Ginny, but um, I'm bewildered as many people I've talked to uh, on the Republican side of the aisle, conservative side of the aisle, no one really understands what's happening. And as I say in a piece that'll be on the griot.com later today, if not now, is that um, I think it's a cry for help in some form to go into this and, and demand that someone apologize for something that uh, we all know Anita Hill on the record has been very clear that she told the truth. She testified truthfully and for Jenny Thomas to still be having issues about something that is now 20 years old is pretty amazing. Well Earl you also have written a piece about this and you basically say that you think this is uh, politically motivated. Why? Well, there's no mystery to me why. You know, it has nothing to do with an apology. I mean, 20 years after the fact, that's ridiculous. What it has everything to do with is the fact that Jenny Thomas is very well connected politically. As you know, she has Liberty Central. She's raising a lot of money through a nonprofit organization for candidates uh, on the right side of the political spectrum. She also has a scorecard in which she has made clear that we are going to rate and we're going to grade the candidates, which really is a subtle warning to the political line, namely the conservative line. So essentially, Jenny Thomas is a rising force. She's out there literally on the campaign trail beating the bushes. So, you know, the timing to me fits in with a political motive on the part of Jenny Thomas and Liberty Central and the conservative right. So I'm not surprised at all. Let it's me, not about let me uh, ask you Anita both, Hill is it apologizing. Just possible, is it just possible that this is a wound that never healed? That maybe, right. for all we know, uh, Ginny Thomas had Anita Hill on speed dial and many times went to push that button and maybe finally on a Saturday morning at 7.30 decided to, to get up the nerve to do it. I mean, uh, you know, for I'm her part, that. we understand that Anita Hill has said that she wants to move on and yet she has played the recording of this to reporters, so they have transcribed it. I don't know. Well, here's the problem. Are, are here's the problem with that. Minute, that should have been, I, but I that should have been done 19 years ago. But not now. Right. But why now? But Chris, we have to ask ourselves why I, now. I have to get in here. I, I actually, I respect her, but I reject categorically that this is political. This, we all know. I was there as a no, first-year law student. I disagree, and I'll never forget what those hearings were like as a 23-year-old watching them at the time. And I can tell you unequivocally that something like this for Anita Hill, for Justice Thomas, and for Ginny Thomas is a wound that I doubt any of them will ever recover from. They were humiliated in the national spotlight. All the parties were humiliated. Anita and Hill was accused of being like now. the exorcist. I think it, it was a, a horrible time, and I think that there's still wounds, and I think she's trying to recover from it. I'm not defending her. I don't her. I'm think it has anything to do with wounds. I think it has everything to do with politics. If it was just wounds, if it was just wounds, it would have been done 20 years ago. Why That's not? Not, true. We That's not true. We have a crucial coming up now, and I think we have discussion. to put it in the That's context of that. Sophia Nelson, it is Earl Afari Hutchison, as the, it is as the discussion Politics continues. Politics rules everything. Thank you. Meantime, the drug violence in Mexico has gotten so bad, one town couldn't find anyone brave enough to take the police chief's job until this 20-year-old mom stood up to take the badge. You'll meet her. We're also closely watching races in the House and Senate, but the key to the future could really be at the governor's level. Richard Louie is working on that story. Hey, Richard. Hey there, Chris. Yeah, yeah, your vote in a couple of weeks is not only about 2010, it is also about who sits in the White House after 2012. Why the GOP and Democrats are pushing hard to get your vote in governor races all across the country. From the day we're born, we really do know where we're headed. The 
The whole of humankind is gifted with an innate sense of direction. It's spinal, inborn. That doesn't mean, however, it's always easy. In fact, many times, it's the more difficult course. But when we understand what's happening around us, we lose our fear and we move ahead. We are one nation in progress.